So hello and welcome back to our 3PN Africa life-changing stories. My name is Shalia Stevens and I'm a 3P coach who lives and works in Frankfurt am Main in Germany. And today it is my great privilege and honor to interview Philips Tabaiva. And he is the manager of the Naki Valley 3P alcohol department in Uganda. Um, doing wonderful work, leading a team of men who are healing alcoholism in the Naki Valley um, refugee settlement. And Phillips is not a refugee himself, but a humanitarian, or at least that's the way that I like to think about him. Um, we're in contact a lot, like sometimes even on a daily basis. Phillips is always sending me pictures of his visits out into the villages where he's bringing the understanding of the three principles to people, to 130,000 people in the Naku Valley refugee camp. And Phillips, I just wanted to start by saying hello and welcome to this interview. He's usually the one interviewing, so he's on the other side today. Yeah, hello, Shayda. I'm very happy to be here and I'm very happy to share with you also to be on this call today with you. Very, very good. And we hope the internet connection holds up today and the battery on the phone and everything. So we'll be crossing our fingers <laughs> for that. So, yeah. so Phillips, you know, I, what I would really be interested in knowing is how did you end up at Naki Valley? Because you don't have to be there. You <laughs> went home, you went home recently. Um, I think your home is about, I think you told me five hours away. You went to visit your daughter and your family and you come back and you don't have to be there like a lot of the people that are there. So why are you there? What, what brought you there? Uh, yeah, first of all, uh, I'd like to appreciate much about that question. Uh, first of all, me to get into Nakivari, I may say uh, I, I was so lucky to be here because, first of all, to come to Nakivari, it was because of my my friend who lived around uh, this area is out of the camp. But when I had come to visit him and... Uh, I came to view the settlement away, like uh, two kilometers away. I was I trying to ask him, like, uh, what is that area? And he tried to explain to me that it is a refugee settlement. And he, go, he, he went ahead to explain how refugees are, who, who is living in that area, like mentioning how it is a, a mixed a mixed place of people from Somalia, from Democratic Republic of Congo, from South Sudan, Ethiopia. Many people coming together there because of political terror and uh, maybe human disasters uh, from their home areas. And I was uh, so much impressed because uh, I had to sleep at his place uh, that night. So the following day, I had to move into the refugee camp, which is in Akivare, in to see how life is, how people are living. And uh, after reaching in the camp, of course, it was uh, uh, something hard because all the people are speaking Swahili. And uh, I used to study Swahili in the high school, but I was not able to practice it since I, I was living outside the camp. But because uh, um, Nakivare people are speaking Swahili mostly, now, after entering into the camp, it was also like a privilege because I had uh, studied Kiswahili. So I started interacting with people, though I was uh, kind of surprised how people are living, how like people live in temporary houses, in huts, and how there are many gather, gathered in one place. So, but majorly the language, the Kiswahili language that I had studied into a second uh, education, second level, it helped me much to connect with them. And mm -hmm. as I was asking them, um, I had to get interaction with them. And um, I, I went back that day, I did not sleep in camp. Then the following day, it was a Sunday, I, I, I came back and, and I joined the church, joining a church uh, that was uh, full of uh, a tribe, uh, Banyamrenge, they are called Banyamrenge from the Democratic Republic of Congo, and uh, they tried to express to me 
how uh, the life was uh, so hard for them. Also, language barrier, because sometimes they could uh, get many friends outside the camp, but they could not speak to them because of language barrier. And uh, life was like that. I went back, then uh, I thought to myself, I came down to see how Nakivare is. Then that is where uh, the journey started. Then I lived around. Uh, to see how things are, and I came with the idea of seeing how people are suffering, uh, traumatic feeling, uh, how they they are living in hardship, but because of what happened in their home areas. So I was so much impressed. Now living in, I started to help them by counseling them, uh, going into that church and counseling them into um, Swahili language. And they, they came to love me, and I came to love them, and I got now friendship around the camp. That is how I, I came to say, now, oh, I can live in the camp also me. So I started now living in the camp, and that is how uh, it started. Wow, Phillips, that, that is amazing. I mean, that is just an incredible story that just by visiting a friend, you got called into the work that you're doing to counsel the people in Naki Valley. And what I hear you say is that you just developed a, a love for them and they for you. And that, that drew you into the work that you're doing now. And that's pretty, that's pretty incredible because you don't have to be there in that camp in those conditions with those people. Like I, I guess a lot of the people out there who are listening, maybe in America, in Germany, other places, like they cannot understand maybe the conditions of the camp, that it's hard there, that there's, um, like you said, like there's um, a lack of shelter and there's a lack of food. A lot of times people, you know, are really struggling to get the basic necessary resources that they need and and you're there just among them living there helping helping them there that's that's incredible yeah yeah it was uh it was so much impressive and now from counseling i came to to gather many people now i came to counsel them about how trauma is about living better about teaching them how they can grow their food around their houses then now the idea of uh, registering my community-based organization also came in and I had to register it, that, that is Healing Health, Healing Hearts. And then after that, that is when I, I came into uh, knowing about three principles, three principles that uh, came like as a additional knowledge on how I can help people uh, alleviate uh, their human suffering. And uh, after now gaining from three principles, I had to share much more and uh, it has been so privileged that people have seen success through the sharings yeah well i want to take the interview there but before before that i do that i really would like to hear how you found out about the three principles yourself at like being a counselor like already with the people already helping them with their trauma already helping them to grow food and the things like you were saying like what how did you find out about it and how did it change the way you thought about life, about who you are, about how you think? Like, let's start with your, your, your own personal understanding before we talk about how you help others with the understanding. Uh, first of all, as, uh, as I mentioned, um, I was living uh, now in Akivari, but sharing with people, helping people to elevate their suffering, but of course, I did not have um, pure understanding about myself, about knowing that thought is so much uh, um, can change my life. So uh, by understanding the three principles, uh, of course, uh, there was my friend who had a school and uh, I used to go to his school also to meet uh, some people and he knew that I'm uh, a counselor uh, sh sharing with people about hope. So after um, he, he was the one who knew Harry, after now knew, knew, knowing Harry, he knew uh, um, when the, the group of helping people into counseling. So when he was uh, attending Harry's teachings, 
he had to invite me and say, I have uh, listened to Harry and it seems he's a good man and he's sharing uh, the, what he's sharing would, would be matching with what you're doing to the community to make sure that people can see their own beauty. So he invited me and now Harry started uh, training us, uh, started sharing to us about city principles and I started the seeing myself, though I was sharing with people, but still, I was still lacking something um, to say, uh, to share the purity of how thoughts works, of how uh, loving God is so vital. So I came to understand that wisdom lies within, and also love is so much important, uh, starting with myself. Because before, as I was sharing, I could share, but when sometimes I see uh, sometimes people who may try to not attend to me, you find sometimes it takes me a lot of time, I don't give them attention, something like that. But I came to understand that all that outside circumstance should not uh, be uh, making me live uh, into a negativity or something like that. So I came to understand that three principles, understanding three principles helped to me to know that wisdom lies within me and what I I bring into my life is what is going to come out. If I now try to overcome the negativity, then the negativity is the one to be coming out. So it was so much important to understand uh, the right use of thought, to understand that if I'm overthinking, then the same overthinking is, go is going to affect my feelings and uh, I want to be happy. So, Phillips, tell me about bringing the three principles into your work as a counselor and like starting to go out and wanting to heal alcoholism in the community because for people who haven't maybe heard about Naki Valley Refugee Camp anytime people are subject to war uh conflict um really really big hardships um whether it be drought starvation like all the things and people are getting displaced and coming into a situation like a refugee camp where they're leaving their homes they're displaced they're dealing with a lot of memories of trauma that has happened and many of them are reaching for alcohol because they believe if they drink they will feel better it like is a way to feel happier, to numb themselves. At least that's what they believe. And then it gets them into all kinds of trouble. And now you're going out and you're trying to help people with this issue that's like rampant in the refugee camps, but also in other parts of Africa. Tell me how that work is and what bringing the three principles into that work is meaning to you. Uh, first of all, it has been uh, so blessing, and uh, as I said, I, I see uh, myself as a, a lucky human being to be around here because uh, uh, when I, I was sharing um, three principles to people after I have I learned about them, then I could share majorly about emotional trauma and how people are living and how they overthink. But now I came to understand that in my groups that uh, I was uh, sharing too, I came to see that people just come there and you find sometimes they are not even listening. So when I tried to find out, I found out that some people even come there, but they are even drunk. They are coming into sessions, uh, but still they first pass through bars and uh, sometimes they are, they are not stable because of alcohol and they come into sessions. So when I now discovered, discovered about that, I tried to take uh, a control to see how best can I be sharing to people who are coming to listen to themselves, to feel themselves on how things are moving. So that is when uh, I started to tell them that alcohol is never a disease, but it is up to them to own what they think. If they are overthinking about the past, and they think now going into taking alcohol will be the solution, that is a lie. And they come to understand that taking alcohol may, is, is bringing a temporary happiness, and they, and they had to share them that happiness lies within them, and it is gifted free from God. So they came to understand about that, and now sharing into that, we started with the three, three guys, uh, who is uh, Nehemiah, Murinda, and uh, Andrew, so they came 
to see themselves after they have now dropped alcohol. They came now to be counselors after understanding the role of thought and seeing that happiness arises in and seeing that taking alcohol just brings temporary happiness. So it has been um, so great that now the people who were victims are now seeing victory in their life and sharing into others. Well, I feel like because I see, I have seen uh, what uh, God is doing because now I didn't know that I can be able to help some other people. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I can be able to live happy despite of uh, outer challenges, but myself to understand that happiness is something that we, that uh, that is free and in us. So that is why I say that I'm lucky because uh, understanding about three principles have uh, uncovered um, all that to know that sometimes we cover our happiness, ourselves we find we are covering our happiness, so to know that, I see that I'm, I'm so lucky and to see that I can be able to help people who, who are seeing uh, they are they, they dis, depressed and uh, they see that they are hopeless. But seeing that myself, I share with people and they see hope. I share with people and they, they become happy despite the, they don't have houses, they don't, they don't have food. But you see, uh, it is a, also a, a, a sort of a gift from God that's why I, I say that I'm also lucky to be sharing with people and uh, see that the suffering is, is alleviated. Yeah. 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 Isn't it a gift? I feel the same way, Phillips. You know, like on the one hand, it was so life changing for me to come across this understanding. It literally changed everything about how I was experiencing life. And on the other hand, like you, like this incredible gift of getting to share the understanding with other people and wait, watching them wake up to a new understanding of life and their thoughts and, and becoming happy. It's just the biggest gift. And that's what I hear you say. It's like just amazing to watch. And, yes. and that's my, my next question or that leads into my next question, which is like, what, what is a story that you that you experienced you saw happen to someone that really impressed you recently where you where you just can help the people out in the world have a better understanding of like what this change looks like when people understand the three p's and are able to change can you pick just maybe somebody out that comes to mind from recent yeah actually i think uh, this happened uh, now uh uh, it was Monday uh, in our group, and uh, we saw a very beautiful insight when uh, a member in a group we were sharing, and uh, after it was, she was giving a takeaway on what uh, she has uh, got from what I was sharing to them, and uh, she mentioned that she has seen that if she's overputting negativity into her every time, like she's living. Uh, worried about what she's going to eat. The next day, she is living worried what kids will eat. She's living worried how uh, she will get clothes of the kids, all of that. And she she came to, uh, to see that if she is now getting all that negativity into her head, nothing is going to be coming out good. So it was uh, such a, a beautiful insight to see someone when we were starting the sessions in the village, he was over crying. Me, I don't have food. Me, I don't have clothes. Me, I don't have money. But at the end of, uh, of the day, she was the one sharing that I have seen that all this, if I overthink about this, nothing is going to come out. It is all about me to put the, the positivity into myself, then the positive will come out. Uh, I've seen that, uh, of course, she, she came to gain hope before she was living hopeless and before she was living uh, her level of understanding was low and that is why she used to think of the negativity and i came to to share to her that if she keeps thinking about negativity then she will live she will live negative and also if she lives negative then she she's uh, the god is uh, is running away from her. But if she's thinking positive, then she's welcoming the blessings and she's, she's going to live better. Mm. So why is hope so important 
for the people that you teach, Phillips? What have you seen about that? Why is hope so important? Uh, because I've seen uh, sometimes if uh, someone has lost hope, is now hopeless, then you find that at one point, then he's not even loving himself because he's not hopeful. Now he tried to trying to hate himself, is now seeing that everything is not possible. So I have seen that hope is something very important because someone who is hopeful, then love and forgiveness comes in and is, he has to see how he's, he can balance life and also he or her thoughts. Mm, yeah, yeah. So Phillips, what, when you look into the future and all of the things that are coming, and you know, we don't know, like we're always living on unknown, but what is your dream for the people at Naki Valley? Like, what do you dream of happening for them? Uh, first of all, I'm dreaming that uh, people have been mostly, oh, they are singing about uh, love of God, but sometimes they don't uh, also think about themselves. So I see in future, all people will understand about themselves, about love of God, about their thinking. Then when that balance comes in, they will have to love themselves and forgive the rest. Yeah. 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 That they will also love themselves. That's what you hope for the people there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, Phillips, what else do you want to share with the people who are out there listening? Like, what do, what would you want them to know about Naki Valley, about the three principles, about the work that you're doing, anything that you would think is important to share? Uh, first of all, I would like to share that uh, where we are living, uh, people are needed, they are vulnerable people, but uh, we are trying to share our best and uh, what we are sharing, first of all, is welcome and we are seeing success, uh, but we still push ahead to see how it is going. But also I would share to anyone who is listening to me that if you have anybody having challenges concerning uh, emotional trauma, concerning addiction, uh, I'm available to be sharing to people to make sure we alleviate suffering into the world and uh, we live better. Yeah. Yeah. And Phillips, you told me today that you would love to get on a call with the client who is struggling with alcoholism and addiction and share what you've been sharing with the people at Naki Valley, because you've seen it completely transform lives there. And Phillips wants to like be a global um, 3P educator. So like, it doesn't matter where you are coming from, from Sweden, from the Czech Republic, from China, he doesn't care. Reach out and let us know. And um, we'll hook you up with Phillips and have a, have a conversation. And I also wanted to share Phillips and maybe you can help me out with this because, you know, the work that Phillips and his team are doing is they've been doing it on a like shoestring budget for the last couple of years, like a year and a half or even longer now. And we've been out there um, helping them spread their wisdom with the world, like through videos like this one, through webinars. And there's also some financial need there that, um, you know, is just, it's just there. Like you guys uh, need money to have transportation to drive out to them, you know, over 70 villages and spread the understanding. Um, a lot of times when you get to the villages, people are hungry and you bring things that sustain them like food uh, just to have a meeting. Um, you know, the, the families of the team members, um, they have a lack of food sometimes and don't get regular meals. So Philip, like, what can you say about people who have been touched today and like want to help this mission of the 3P in Africa, particularly the Naki Valley 3P alcohol department? Like, what do you guys need right now and how can people help? Uh, first of all, uh, as uh, I said, we started these three principles and we are sharing and we have been sharing. Uh, but uh, first of all, we are moving because Naki Valley is covering 71 square kilometer with many villages around uh, 100 maybe villages and uh, we have to move um, on foot uh, from village to village sharing with people and we have already set some groups that we meet we have the schedule that we meet uh, groups um, per schedule from Monday to Friday and uh, 
after that, uh, we still have uh, a need uh, of um, a building that we get uh, our office as a, a sleep alcohol department in Nakivu, so that even if people are moving or out there, they can come into our office and our counselors are there to be delivering service to them. Uh, then uh, also another thing you find where we are going into the villages, as uh, Sherry mentioned, people are living there and they are hungry. So sometimes we share refreshment when we go there and uh, sitting where they sit, they don't have where they sit. The counselors, the, the CP counselors that we are working with, they are having children, they are having wives, but they move from uh, morning and they go into villages to share city principles. And uh, you find they are coming back home, they don't have any sort of facilitation. So we still need a lot to make us uh, more successful, though we are already successful. So that is uh, so much appreciated if anyone could uh, come in, uh, like we're having a GoFund running um, of Nakiba CPR code department. Uh, that will be so much appreciated that we can cover um, some costs and we make sure we deliver our best services to people. Yeah, yeah. So we'll post that GoFundMe link underneath this video for people who are interested in making a donation. And Phillips, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you. Um, I want to thank you for coming today and taking your time to answer my questions. Um, I want to thank you for being my friend, for keeping contact with me every day and letting me know how the sharing is going, how things are going in the community. I want to thank you for being a positive influence on my life. Your your work is um, is an example of love um of of just just enormous love phillips is one has one of the biggest hearts that i know and when you're out there doing your work every day it encourages me more to do my work every day sharing this understanding with other people so you've been a major influence on me phillips i don't know if you know that but it is yeah. true it is true and i i appreciate you so much yeah, I appreciate you too so much, Sheila, because uh, first of all, uh, you have done much into our lives, also into donating. The other time we shared with you, and uh, it has pushed us. Even where I'm sitting, we came to rent this office that I'm sitting uh, because of the, no the donations you give, uh, though it is also needed to be ending that maybe in future we can build our own office. But uh, where we are, we are here because of the donations that you, you raised. And uh, what we share um, um, daily or even more time that I share with you, I also feel myself that uh, we are in positive feelings there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're in a positive feelings. It's a spiritual connection, Phillips. And I hope everyone out there can feel your heart, can have heard something today for their own life, um, that they will feel more inner peace and calm and love and take something away from this conversation today and um, keep listening to the 3PN Africa life-changing stories that Phillips is going to be helping me bring out some more in the next couple of weeks and months. And so we'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Bye.